This is the story of London in the 17th century, one of the most dramatic periods in Britain's history, illuminated through two remarkable surveys. The first, A Labour of Love, was produced by London Chronicler. He created a detailed account recording not just London's buildings and businesses, but its character. The second, written over a hundred years later, took the original work and updated it. The changes documented in these surveys reveal the origins of the phenomenal city London was to become. The first survey was the work of John Stowe, a city merchant and chronicler, whose work was published in the very late 16th century. Stowe walked every street, explored all the great buildings, creating a detailed account of a medieval city on the brink of change. Stowe's London, still mostly contained within its Roman wall, was home to just 200,000 people. The second survey, an updating of Stowe, was published in 1720 by John Stripe, a clergyman and London historian. Between Stowe and Stripe, London had suffered a calamitous century. Sectarianism, civil war, the execution of the king, plague and the great fire. London should have been finished, and yet. The city that Stowe had personally recorded street by street had grown far beyond the capacity of one man to document on foot. Despite a century of turmoil, London grew from a small medieval city into a vast, sprawling, wealthy metropolis. Indeed, one of the greatest trading cities in the world. By walking in the footsteps of these great chroniclers and comparing their surveys, I'm going to find out how London transformed during this remarkable century. If you had to find a catalyst for the astonishing evolution of London, where else would you find it but here, on the shores of one of the most famous rivers in the world? Stone strikes vastly different descriptions of the same stretch of river show just how large a part it played in London's transformation. The Thames is, of course, integral to the story of London. Stowe and Stripe, when they describe the Thames, offer clues to why London survived and thrived. Stowe, on his journey through London, describes the Thames in a very particular way. This river openeth indifferently upon France and Flanders, our mightiest neighbours. And this city standeth thereon in such convenient distance from the sea, sufficiently removed from the fear of any sudden dangers that may be offered by them. Stowe's description of the Thames reflects the concerns of his age. For centuries, England had been involved in European wars, so for Stowe, the Thames was largely defensive. It offered splendid open vistas so Londoners could see enemies approaching. For Stripe, the Thames meant something very different. Moreover, its great trade may be guessed at by the shipping lying at anchor in the River Thames. The masts resemble a forest, besides those constantly going out or coming from foreign parts of the known world. Stripe didn't see the Thames as a barrier to invasion. He saw it as the lifeblood of the city, a port that welcomed goods and people from all over the world.